I'm Carolyn Holzman, and welcome to Confessions of an SEO. This is episode two. I thought about what to call it, so I'm just going to go right for it. It's called Why I Hate Client SEO. So now I know what you're thinking. If you listen to episode one, you're saying, well, if I love SEO, why do I not love doing client SEO? So I guess I need to be precise in my language. I love the SEO strategy to make a local business rank in maps and organically. What I do not like is how often and how much one has to hold the hand of a client who, to quote Jack Jack Nicholson as Colonel Jessup from A Few Good Men, goes to sleep under the blanket of ranking that I provide and then questions the manner in which I provide it. So okay, I I guess now you know. I think it's a fair analysis to say that there aren't a lot of women in non-corporate SEO publicly and actively on the front lines of testing and SEO ranking theory and working at a a high level of SEO as an algorithm. So for any women out there, uh, I know I don't have to explain why that might be. Usually a person being the most outrageous or the loudest is not a woman. I'll be the first to admit that being in the SEO world, there are reasons why you may find more of us writing content and being in social media, which are typically less confrontational than SEO. So I'll just leave, I'll just leave it there in terms of a heavy duty, this is how the algorithm works conversations. You don't often hear a woman's voice in it. And I want to change that. When I started providing SEO for companies, I found a lot of times, well, let's just say it was challenging sometimes to be taken seriously in the beginning. For the most part, I put it down to the fact that a lot of businesses had gotten burned from people who talk loud and fast. I'm sure too that when I started and my prices reflected my experience, there were those who hired me thinking, I know Carolyn isn't going to fly off to the Bahamas for $500 a month so we can see how things go. Now in future episodes, I'll share uh, some of my more specific client experience, but I think I walked into it with this idea that since I could help, and I could create a better situation that all I had to do was explain this and people would say yes. And the truth of the matter is most people do not say yes. And most of the ones that do say yes, they don't have the experience to appreciate what it takes to be at a strategy level with how Google works these days. And in the beginning, no matter what I said, whatever words I used in the conversation, um, most of my early clients, I think, thought I was basically a glorified web designer. And I say that now, you know, it came from uh, hindsight analysis. I didn't know it at the time, so I'd leave meetings or get off the phone and wonder, what the heck did I say that made them think I was responsible for updating their WordPress software? So I'll admit it's easy to confuse the website and website creation with SEO operations and strategy, because obviously SEO has a lot to do in most people's minds with the website. And it's not untrue. Um, But I do often wonder why that is. And I think that even when one starts learning SEO, the arena is always the website. And you couple that with a deep wish in all of us, whether we know it or not, that somewhere, somehow, SEO has a magic button. And once someone discovers that magic button, all these digital marketing issues evaporate. One of the things, though, that I found interesting is that a lot of times when I... Uh, explain how SEO works to business owners. I got a lot of pushback. And at first, you know, I think I just bulldozed any resistance. I didn't really um, take it as what I think it is. Um, And especially as I was new in the industry, where my point of reference was as a business owner myself, at the time, it it wasn't like it is now. Um, We did not have a lot of SEO mastermind groups uh, that were accessible to newbies. They were always sort of secret. So when a Google update would happen, clients would not be happy that they'd slipped a few spots or they'd get frustrated and come out and just ask me, who do I need to talk at Google so I can write them a check and we can have this website bang right up there and then I don't have to pay you every month. They really didn't understand the fact that organic rankings are like a lost leader to Google. It's like selling milk for half price but putting the milk far in the back of the store so they have to go Customers all have to go all the way through there to get it and maybe spend some more money than planned because they're seeing a whole lot of other things. So everyone knows that uh, the, the milk run is not a quick run in and run out. 
And in some ways, client SEO is like that. Most clients don't understand that what Google wants is for you to put your business in paid ads and forget all about ranking organically. So the algorithm works in such a way and it gets updated from time to time. For instance, uh, 2020 had been a banner year for updates. And I, I'd say that somewhat sarcastically. So as we move into 2021, there are probably gonna be more updates as we go and we're not finding less. In fact, we just finished coming through one. So like most independent businesses assume SEO is confined to the website, they also assume that Google really wants to help them as businesses and get them right up there to the top. I mean, why else would Google hold all these little workshops? Why else would Google give us all these free little things like Google My Business listings? Why would they give us things like Google Analytics and Search Console and, and all these tools that they put out to, to tell us how well we're doing? And the truth of the matter is, it's handy to have Google Analytics. But I know this is going to sound a little bit blasphemous, but what they share and give away as free is not perfect, and it's not complete. If you're reviewing your Google Analytics and Search Console data to decide if your SEO agency or strategy is working, you risk using incomplete, inaccurate data to maybe ruin what might be a really good thing. And that is why I hate doing client SEO. If clients have been burned by other SEO companies and they mistakenly assume Google is perfect and generously giving them the best analytics in the world, how can they possibly hear it when someone who lives deep within that digital world, uh, when they suggest that maybe Google isn't your best friend? So for instance, with the data that we're seeing in testing, it's possible and maybe likely that Google Analytics is not catching everything. They provide it for free, so how much do they feel that they really have to do? And by the way, it doesn't come unfiltered. I mean, the most recent analytics data you can see in your account comes from two days ago. I can't ascribe a motive. Um, someone in the testing group, and I shall call him Ted, was testing various analytics tools, including Google Analytics. They did not come in first place, and I'll just leave it at that. And if any of you are wondering what analytics are, it's a way of tracking the number of visits to a site, where they come from, how long they stayed, what pages they visited, etc. And for the curious, if you're wondering how that can be tested, a test site is set up, and traffic is sent, and then the traffic that is known to have arrived at the site is compared to what the analytics confirms. And obviously, the goal is 100%. You know you sent 100 visits, and you have analytics that shows 100 visits. But it doesn't happen that way, and it definitely doesn't happen in the tests where Google Analytics are tested. So if you're one of those businesses that hauls in your SEO agency or strategist to show them that your big money page for your big money keyword didn't get any clicks last month, that's part of the problem. Now, there are times when Google would quietly post a tweet and say, oh yeah, we had a problem with our servers, so the month of November, the data is incomplete. But they don't do that every time. So imagine how it feels for your work to be evaluated based on how much traffic can be read in Google Analytics or behavior by Search Console. Does anybody else other than myself remember as a kid being accused of doing something that someone else was responsible for? This is the stuff of nightmares for SEOs doing client work. So in my experience, nobody wants to hear this possible negative thing about Google if they've made up in their minds that the data they can see is accurate. And if they were to give that up, they would have no other way to measure your effectiveness or value as an SEO. Now, sometimes you have to say the emperor has no clothes. And this is another reason why it's really hard to work with clients because Google has done a terrific job of portraying themselves as being super duper helpful. And when you look at it, you can see they've built a search engine that is very difficult to figure out. Now, if you felt this frustration as a business owner, you should consider the possibility that the goal of Google might be to appear to help you either in reality or more importantly, perceptually, to have just enough taste of success, just enough free tools 
but not so much that you ultimately will give up and go into paid advertising. I'll, I'll let that sink in. Let me just say that again. That maybe you're going to be just good enough to know what it is that's out there, but not so good that you avoid all the frustration and you just resort to paid ads because you really need to be on page one. Now, I'll agree. These days, unless you're in a small town with not a lot of competitors, taking on running of your business and the challenge of not only figuring out the Google algorithm, but at the level of competitiveness within your local industry, frankly, it would be nothing short of a fool's errand. But running Google ads isn't your only option. If you can find an SEO company with an ethically sourced SEO strategy, you could invest in your own digital asset instead of putting it potentially in the hands of an international conglomerate. All you need to know is a way to determine if that SEO company is doing a good job. Which brings me to how I view client SEO today. I was listening to a talk about how to stay connected in these times when we're asked to stay apart. And the speaker shared the process of developing cover artwork for her book and was reviewing the background imagery, you know, the picture that uh, they print the words on top of. And there was one that was too desolate for her taste. And she asked one of her colleagues what they saw. And they responded with something that made me think about the arena of SEO, client SEO. And that was, this place looks like it needs a lot of love. So for any independent business owners that are listening to this, and that, and this is you, know that I hear you. I know you need to know more. I also know that you need to recognize that you need to know more. And based on what you know right now, accept the possibility you don't have enough of that knowledge to be able to determine what digital success looks like. That's it. It's just a tiny step to be willing to accept that possibility. And for the SEOs out there, it's your job to step up to the plate and responsibly educate your clients. Talk with them, yes. And stay on the forefront of what is happening today. That doesn't mean you throw out everything. But when you know Google is going through an update, call your client up. Prepare them for the possibility that things might alter, but that you're on it. And as soon as the dust settles, you'll take appropriate action. Be the guide they need. We must stand up and advocate for this industry. Remember, there's a reason that those that aspire to climb Everest hire guides, professional guides. And these guides would never let potential climbers start at wearing a t-shirt and sneakers. So don't be the SEO that lets your clients lead the expedition. Even if it means you have to fire them, it is your industry and it is your expertise. Well, that's it for this week on Confessions of an SEO. I'll look forward to talking to you next week. This is Carolyn Holzman for Confessions of an SEO. I'll see you in the SERPs.